she's covered by the bloodshed on Calvary. I am a brand new girl. I've been touched by God's own hand. There's been a change, a change. We had such a good service this morning. The Lord really moved and blessed. We had a good turnout, and I, I tell you, uh, I got a good comment on the on the service, and I, I praise God for that. You know, I, I just want to preach. I don't. It's not by anything that I do. It's not by might, like the sister says a lot of times. It's not by might nor power, but it's by my spirit, saying, "The Lord," and it's, He's the one that does, and He knows what you need tonight. I said, Jesus knows what you need. Praise God. I'm going to read some scripture out of the book of Timothy. If you want to read with me, it's in the second book of Timothy. Uh, we're going to start at the fourth chapter, and we'll just see what we can get out of the word. He's the, he's the preacher. I'm just the instrument that he wants to use. Amen. He's the one that gives me the words because I couldn't do it without him. And the Bible tells us in, in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, chapter it says i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom see he's the judge i said he's the judge he's going to judge everyone not me i'm not no judge and i don't think anybody else is the judge god's the judge how many know that so he's the judge and there's going to be a great judgment day Man, he was, we're gonna. Uh, everyone's gonna stand before him. The 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 saved and the wicked, and also they're. Go, it's not gonna be in the same judgment though. The righteous judgment is different. I told him I believe it was one night last week. I said, you know, I believe that we're being judged right now, according to our life that we live, and according to the works that we do in this life, we're being judged for that. But in the second judgment of the Amen. The, the great white throne judgment, I guess you would call it, is when the wicked's going to be standing up and they're going to come before God and they're going to be judged. And I'm so glad that he's the judge, not me. He's the judge. He's going to judge the quick and the dead. But he, as I said, it's going to be a judgment day coming. You know, a lot of people don't know that, but there is a judgment day coming. Somebody say, well, I've never been to court. Well, you're going to be in one, one of these days. You're going to God's court. You're going to judgment, amen, and give an account of the deeds that you have done in your life and in your body and so forth and, and give an account for everything. Hallelujah. Well, I wonder what we're going to have to say when we stand before God and God judges us. But uh, I believe we won't have to say a whole lot. But he says, preach the word. I like that one. Preach the word. 
That's the only thing that's going to get things, things done is the Word of God. Not anything that what somebody can say, but it's by the Word of God. And he says to preach the Word. The Word is, is uh, like water. It says, to, amen, it, it, it just washes and it cleanses, amen, washed in the water by the Word. We know the blood of Jesus cleanses us and washes all of our sins away, but it's by the water of the preaching of the Word of God. That's how we're born again. We receive that word. We believe what the preacher said. We accept it as our, uh, him as our personal Savior, and our life was changed. Just that, and you know, it came from all the way from heaven to come down to save us and deliver us and set us free. That's the kind of God I'm serving. He, he, a person that's really hunger in the heart and really wants something from God, he's there for you. If you really want something from God, he's there. He's not way off somewhere in the wild blue yonder. He said he's nigh unto them that are brokenhearted and a contrite spirit. And I believe that it will, amen, this last days, he says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. I was reading in the book of Chronicles, I believe 7 and uh, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, where he said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I would hear from heaven. And he said, then I will heal their lands. Praise God. God's going to heal. He's going to deliver. He's going to set free. That, that's the kind of God I'm serving. Amen. So he said, preach the word. Be instant. You know, I don't believe he's just talking to the preachers, pastors, evangelists, teachers. I believe he's talking to all of us. Preach the word. You know, all it says in Matthew and Mark, rather, it, it says that, um, you know, to the believers, he said, he, he said to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And all the believers weren't, weren't preachers like pulpit preachers. But they're all preachers because we're exalting the Lord. And the Bible tells us in one place in, in Revelations, I believe, it said that the testimony of the Lord Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So when you're testifying to someone, you're prophesying to them about the Lord and about the saving grace of God and how that God wants to touch their hearts and touch their lives. And, and it's for all believers. Amen. You know, we, we want to be about our Father's business and do what's right and do the thing that's pleasing Him. And the only thing I know that we can, we can do is to just tell you about what the Word of God says and He won't change it for nobody. It hadn't been changed for years and it's not going to be changed now. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Word is going to judge us one day in Judgment Day. It's going to come back to us. Somebody said, well, I don't read it. Well, it's still going to, it's going to come back to us. We're still going to have to stand before God in Judgment Day. How many know that? And that word's going to stand right there in front of us. That's how God's going to judge. The Bible tells us in Revelation that there, the books are going to be open. There's a, amen, the book is, one of them is the Word of God. Amen, it's going to be opened up. And another book that's going to be open is the Book of Life. And those books are going to be open, and God's going to check us. He's going to check down through there, and, and he's going to see if we, we were doing what the Lord would have us to do while we're here in this life. Hallelujah. So we got to preach it. Be, preach the word. Be instant. When does that mean? Instant. You know, that means right now. Always be ready to give someone an answer that has the need. You know, we got to watch over people's souls. How many know that? And we got to be able to give an account, amen, uh, of our words that we speak to them. So we got to be instant, in season, out of season. That's what he said. Instant, in season, out of season. In this part here, a lot of people don't like that too much, but it says to reprove and rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And, you know, nobody likes to be corrected, but correction is good for the soul. Honest, even honest criticism, I believe, is good for the soul. Amen. Some people say, well, he's a critic and he criticizes. Amen. But if it's an honest criticism, I believe it's good for the soul. We need to take it and take it as fact. 
and sometimes it will help people. That's why he said to reprove and rebuke and exhort because, you know, some people do things. Sometimes they may not know it's wrong to do it. But when they find out it's wrong and then they do something about it, when they hear the word of God and they repent it, then it, it's going to get something accomplished. Amen, we're working. One songwriter wrote a song said, I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building, a sure foundation. Hallelujah. And the Bible teaches us that the foundation of God stands sure. As a matter of fact, it's over in the, uh, the same book, the second Timothy, the second uh, chapter, beginning in ninth verse. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. Oh, isn't that wonderful? The Lord knows them that are his. Glory. Oh, yes. And he said, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from sin. Depart from rebellion and iniquity. And I've been reading in the Old Testament a lot, and I've preached on it some, but in the Old Testament, God tries his best to get those people lined up and get them straightened out. You know, they, they were in bondage down in Egypt for over 400 years, and finally they got to praying, and they got to crying, they got to seeking God. After 400 years, God delivered them out of bondage. Some people might have, I don't think you can wait that long, 400 years, before you get out of your problems and out of your burdens and, and troubles, amen. But we, we, still, we, we still have to call upon the name of the Lord. And he said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered or shall be saved. Hallelujah. So we need to call on him. Go ahead, give him a clap off for him, will you? Amen. Preach it. The foundation of God is standing sure. It can't move. Jesus said to Peter, he said, Peter, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So he wants to build on a solid foundation. If you build your you you build on a sand foundation and you don't have no uh, solid foundation, when the storms come and the winds blow and the, the the rains come, it's going to fall. So we need to be we we need to be founded on the rock, the rock of ages, which is Jesus. One thing about it, it this here never grows old. It don't go old. The word of God don't never grow old. It's sweeter, amen. The more you read it, the sweeter it gets and the better it gets to you, amen. The more you read it, the more you learn, and the more you learn, you can believe God for more. How many know that? That's what God wants you to do. Believe God for more. Hallelujah. Believe him. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not listen now. This is what it said. There's a time that they will not endure sound doctrine. I believe we're living in that time right now. See, this was written back in 1600 years. of uh, they, they, they put the Bible together back in 1600. Amen. But still people are doing the same thing. They're not heeding to it. They're not listening to it. Amen. Some people say, well, they ain't going to tell me nothing. Years ago, I had people say, well, uh, he, he, he meant God, you know, that preacher don't know what he saw me. He's too young. I mean, know that. But the Holy Ghost ain't never, he's always, he's mature. <laughs> Glory. I said the, the Holy Ghost is mature. When you receive the Lord into your heart and life, he is mature. He's not there's no young. The, the Bible tells us that the young and old is going to dance together. Amen. The young and old is going to have a, a, a time together with the Lord. How many know that? But there's a time, as I said, that they won't endure sound doctrine. But this is what happens to them if they don't endure it. It said, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They're looking for someone to prophesy over them. Man, I've heard story after story about people, amen, that they don't really want to dedicate themselves to God and their life to God, but they run all over the country trying to find someone that would pray for them and pray, uh, pray for uh, their, their faith and pray that, uh, for their deliverance. 
They're looking for someone to tickle their ears and saying how great they are, how 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 great they are, how wonderful they are. And it's good to, it's good that they're here. Amen. But you know, we need to preach the word. They don't mind not receive it, but that's all right. We'll preach it anyway. Man. Uh, we've had Amen. All these people here, I believe you love Jesus and you're serving the Lord and you're living for God and you're ready to make heaven your home. But see, there's many people out in the world that doesn't know that yet. They don't know what you know. You know, this church is blessed because we have the word of God. We preach the gospel and amen. We get, uh, sometimes we get deep in the word of God. And, and but in some churches, you, they, they, they don't preach that type of message. The depth of the word of God. But we need to get the word preached that it will stick with us. I told him this morning, I said, we need some stickability. Amen. Get something that will keep. Man, you need to get something to, to stick with you. You know, well, it's better like eating breakfast or something. You eat. You got to eat something that's going to stay with you for a, a few hours anyway. And it's going to be some stickability there to keep you. Well, the word of God's going to keep you too. Jesus said, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. He said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. That's pretty far, isn't it? He's going to be with us until the end of the world. We can't see him. He's not. I mean, you can't see him here tonight, but he's here in this place. He's here to encourage you. He's here to fill you with his love. He's here to fill you with his mercies and grace. How many know that? He's here to do that work. And we need to, we need to accept just like, amen, just get under the spout where the glory comes out and just stay under there until God fills us and floods us with the presence and anointing of God, amen, and stay filled with the Spirit, with the Holy Ghost. Stay filled with it. But in order to stay filled with the Holy Ghost, we got to stay under the spout where the glory comes out. We got to stay close to the Lord. How many know that? We got to stay close to Him. Amen. Because if we don't stay close to Him, we're going to leak out. I said, we'll leak out. And I don't want to leak out. I don't see nobody leak out of the Spirit of God. Somebody said, You mean you can leak out of the Spirit of God? Yes, if you don't stay close to God. Amen. You can get in a place where you don't you don't even want to go to church. You get out and you, get, you stay out of church so long, you just don't have a desire to want to go. That's not right. That's not the way a Christian should want it. A Christian should want, amen, to be in the house of God. They, would, they want to be fel in fellowship with God's people. How many know that? Fellowship with one another. They sang that song a while ago, amen, about the leaning on the everlasting arms. And we need that fellowship, brother. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't serve God by ourselves. We have to have some help. We have to have, amen, I know the Holy Ghost will come alongside and he'll comfort you and he'll will encourage you. But we need some with, with flesh and blood that we can see that will encourage us too. How many believe that? We'll need some, we need some, uh, one to help us when things sometimes it seem like, well, where I'm going to turn, I don't know what to do, but we need someone, amen, will come along and comfort you and say, all right, everything's going to be okay. Just trust the Lord, amen, fellowship amen, with them, amen. And you'll have, your, you'll have your times of testing and times of trials. And, and you know, sometimes you wonder when it's going to be over with. When we get to heaven. <laughs> And when we get to heaven, you won't have to worry about it no more, will we? Because the old devil's going to be bound in the, in the bottomless pit. And then after the thousand years, he's going to be cast into a lake of fire, which is a second death. See, hell wasn't, hell wasn't uh, prepared for any human being. It was prepared for Satan and his followers, his angels. Amen. And so... He's going to be cast into the pit for eternity. And not only, but all those that follow him too. I mean the people that, 
that won't serve God, don't want God, just like the early uh, children of Israel. They didn't want God. They didn't want to listen to what the, the, the prophet says. They didn't want to be obedient to the prophets. And because of that, amen, God got angry with them. And I was thinking, you know, God prophesied to them and said, well, the judgment's going to come. And, you know, a lot of times it was years and years, amen, maybe hundreds of years before it ever started, it ever happened. Just like the second coming of Christ, it was prophesied, amen, way back in the Old Testament. It's prophesied. And God says that the wrath and the judgment's going to fall when the Antichrist takes over and rules. But I tell you, I don't want to be here when, when that happens. And if, we're close, if we serve God and live for God, we're not going to be here when it happens. Somebody said, well, I'm going to go through the tribulation so that I might be able to preach the gospel. If you, they won't listen to you now. They won't listen to you in the tribulation time. No, they won't. And man, there's going to be, in that time of, of tribulation, there's going to be two-thirds of, of the population upon the earth. At that time, is going to be destroyed. But God's still got a remnant. But I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in, don't you? I said, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Glory to God. And I want to see my Lord and my Savior one day. Praise his name. But they're looking for people. People today are looking for someone that will sweet talk to them and tickle their ears. Hey, man. I don't want no one to tickle my ears. I want to hear the truth. If it gets on my toes, that's all right. How many know that? I said it's, it's good for the soul. I said it's good for the soul. If you can get, you can, you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, and they would correct you for that, I believe that's good for the soul. But a lot of people don't want to be collect, corrected. It's like, like the, the kids nowadays. They don't want the parents to tell them what to do. They're not like us when we were kids. Man, we men, we done something wrong. We got corrected for it. Man, we get that they get that hickory switch out and, and lay it to us. Or that miner's belt or whatever they wore at that time. Amen. They get that belt out. If we miss if we done something wrong, they would correct us. And you know, we never done it again. But nowadays the kids. Amen. They can't do that anymore. They won't look at, let them correct their kids anymore. Amen. They just let them go and do what they want to do. Amen. If they get in trouble, they send them up to the room. And you know, if they go up to the room, they got television up there. They got cell phones up there. They got, they got food in their, in their cabinet they can eat. Amen. They're not caring. And they don't want to listen. Now, I know that's not a popular message today, but it's the truth. Man, that's why the world, amen, is in trouble. Amen, the, the young people in the schools, they're up against the, amen, the government. They're trying to get them to take away the guns and all of this stuff, and they can't even control the bullying that's, that's going on in the schools. Amen, they can't control that. Man, they've been doing that, amen, for years. Now, they tried it even when I was younger. They tried it on me, but I didn't, I didn't back down. I bought them off. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it. But they had those guys. They had those bullies there in that time. But you got to show them who's boss, don't you? Amen. Got to show them who's boss. You ain't going to push me around. I might be a little fella, but, uh, you know, I still got power <laughs> to take care of myself. Amen. Amen. But anyway, as I said, we need to pray for our country. We really, really do need to pray for the world that God will get a hold of people's lives and he will save them and deliver them and set them free. And it says in another verse here, it said, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables, telling fairy tales. I mean, you don't hear very many gospel preaching anymore. It's always something that happened in the past. Experiences. Amen. Experience that happened in the past. I tell you, we need to preach the word. If, it, if they get mad and, they, and it gets on their toes, preach it anyway. Preach it just as hard as you can because that's the only thing that's going to save them is the truth. The word. 
and they don't want the truth, then they're going to be lost forever. You know, God don't raise up churches just to, to have a place to assemble together. He raised up churches so we could hear the word of God and, and so the word can get down into our soul. Clean. <laughs>